Hi, everybody. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between a design history file, a DMR, and a DHR. So the DMR is device master record. The DHR is device history record. So I'll repeat those three more times or, or one more time. Um, number one, design history file. It's the history of your design. Device master record. It's the master record of your design. And device history record is a specific lot or batch. That's that's a qu very quick summary, but we're going to give you examples today. So let me share my screen here. Um, oh, I got to present. Thought I had it all set up. There we go. So here is our example that I was going to show you. Our first example is of a design history file. And compliments of Lindsay Walker, she created a recipe for chocolate chip cookies. And both of us are gluten-free, so her recipe is gluten-free. And... This recipe shows the history of changes that she made to this recipe. So over time, she was tweaking her recipe on how to make the perfect chocolate chip cookie. And so she's got changes to this as she went along. She crossed out things. She changed quantities. That's what you're doing in the design control process. As you make changes to the design... As you start out with a prototype or you start out with an older version of the product or a competitor version of the product. As you make little tweaks and improvements and try different things iteratively, you come up with a final design and then you verify and validate it. So verification might be, you know, how how long does it sit on the shelf before it gets moldy and does it does it make the right size cookies and is it affordable and things like that. Those might be things you verify, but the ultimate test for a cookie is validation. Does it taste good? So you give it to somebody, you're my guinea pig. You're going to try this. Do you like the cookie? Does it taste good? Yes. You love the cookie. That's awesome. So validation is what we really care about. It, it's got to taste good. So we do verification tests we see how much it costs, see how long it takes to cook. We see if it spreads out, it's too thin, it's too thick, it's too crumbly, um, it, it has good shelf life. We try all those things out, but at the end of the day, it's how it tastes. So the validation is important. The design history file is a collection of all the records that you had for all the cookies you baked over time, all the different batches, all the different recipes, the ones that you don't tell anybody about. Those go in there too. We have that in the medical device industry. We have ones we don't everybody we don't want anybody to know about because it was a miserable failure. But you're supposed to document those. So the bad ideas, the good ideas, everything goes in there. And then as you go along, you might have a plan. Like I'm going to try substituting this ingredient for that ingredient, and it fails. You have an idea, you have a hypothesis, you do the test, you record the results. And you go back and you change your plan. So you're going to update your plan. You're going to update your design inputs. Like, you know, I need a test to see uh, if it if it stays stable on the shelf for a long time because that last batch, it didn't last more than two days and it was already moldy. I got something wrong here. Or that one doesn't work in the summer. That only works in the winter. So I'm, I'm only going to use that recipe then. Um, hi, everybody. I, I love that people have uh, said hi and they were looking forward to today. So. Thank you, uh, LPS Sachs, and thank you, Alicia, hidden names. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, I really appreciate everybody participating in here. If you have questions, don't hesitate to put them down below. But this is, this is an example of a design history file, and it, it's just one little page of it. You could have many, many tries that you did. One of my favorite books uh, or magazines out there, hi, Lindsay, one of my favorite ones is Cook's Illustrated because Cook's Illustrated kind of goes at it in a very scientific way. And I know Alicia can tell me who the name of the person is 
um, his last name's Brown, and I can't remember his first name. But he he uses the same very scientific approach to deciding, you know, how do we cook the right thing? And he approaches it just like we would for design of a medical device. Very systematic. He has a plan. We do a test, do another plan, do another test, and we keep on doing – oh, it's Alton Brown. That's the name. So we keep on doing this multiple times, and we document this. So a design history file is the collection of all the records, all the mistakes, all the successes, all the people. You might have tried out other people's recipe. You might have had other people try your recipe and see how it worked for them, see if it's reproducible. You might have tried other raw materials. Um, so, you know, last time Price Shopper didn't have that brand, so I went over to who the 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 Aldi's and I got it there instead and that worked beautifully or no it didn't work the same or I tried um eggs that were fresh from the the hens in the yard but it, whereas this one I bought it from the store <laughs> yes Alicia just just as you're typing I know um Alicia was just saying she was typing the name as I uh was saying it um uh, Alton Brown is somebody that I think she's actually knows personally went to the same school but I, I'm not sure um, but, uh, this is the approach to design and they just want to know how you got there. There are some guidelines, like all those meeting minutes that you had every single time your design team got together. Those are not design reviews. Those are just regular design team meetings. You put those in an appendix, but you do document them. You have formal design reviews. You're only required to have one. So you can have one at each phase, but whatever your plan says, that's what you do. It's what your plan says. Your design history file is the evidence that you followed your plan. And as your plan changes, you have to document that. So your plan changes, your inputs change, your outputs change, your verification and validation hopefully won't change because that'll cost you a lot of money. But all of those records go into one file and when I say file, a really big Dropbox folder or 28 binders, if you use three ring binders, and that is your design history file. So collectively all that stuff. Now, when the FDA switches to the M, um, sorry, the QMSR, Quality Management System Regulations, instead of the QSR, the design history file term goes away, but it doesn't change the requirement that you still have to have all those records. In ISO 1345, 7.3, there are multiple places where it says you have to have records. It, everywhere it says 4.25, and it, it gives you a little hyperlink back to 4.25 section. That means you have to have records. So all those records together are your design history file. In the ISO world, they just call those records of design. It's just a different term for the same thing. So you still have a design history file, but it's different because we're not calling it a design history file anymore. Now that takes us to our next thing on the list. So DHF is the history of all the things you've done from the beginning of time till the end when you launch the product. We don't keep the design history file open after we release the product. You still might make changes, but that's not where we document them anymore. Now that you had a 510K, we closed the design history file. Why? because only the FDA cares about the design history file. Everybody else just wants records of design. The FDA calls the design history file this from beginning to end, and they want it closed when you have a 510K. If you make changes after that, that's a new design history file. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the next slide here. So this is a DMR, a device master record. Not a design history record, uh, a device master record. It's not a design master record either. It's a device master record. And so this is how to make the device. This is your recipe. So this is um, Lindsay's final version of her perfect chocolate chip. In this case, it's best gluten-free chocolate chip cookies. So this is the best one. It has a name. The other one didn't have that. This is the final version, the best gluten-free chocolate chip cookie recipe she came up with. And I'm sure she um, has made even better ones since then. But this is the this is the current recipe that this is how we make it. And we make it the same way every single time. So that is what a technical file is. 
It's the way we make our product today for CE marking. That's what a technical file is in Canada. A technical file is in Australia. A technical file is in Brazil. And in the US, we call it a DMR. When the FDA switches over to the QMSR in, um, in February of 2026, the QMSR doesn't have a DMR in it anymore. And the industry even asked, do we have to have a DMR? Aren't you going to define it? I said, no. They already have a medical device file requirement in 4.2.3 of the ISO 1345 standard, and that's adequate. That, that does, it's adequately defined already in there. We believe, believe that's the same as. So we don't need to define a device master record anymore. Just follow 4.2.3, have a medical device file, the current record. So a medical device file is a technical file in Europe, technical file in Canada, technical file in Australia, but in, in the U.S., we're just going to follow the standard and we're going to say it's a medical device file. We don't need to give it a special name. But it's the current recipe on how to build it, not all the history stuff. Then the DHF, the design, I'm sorry, the device history record is also called your batch record or your lot record. Some people call it a lot history record. Some people call it a batch history record. Some people just call it batch or lot, his, uh, lot record. It's a device history record or DHR. A lot of people love their acronyms. I think it confuses people. I would much rather call it a batch record or a lot record. Um, and if you have a single unit, if, if you're making serialized units that are implants or serialized units that are electromedical devices, you might say it's a serial number record. Another way of looking at it, if it's an individual one. But it says, when I made this particular device, this batch of cookies, this is the recipe I use. So you might have multiple lot records, multiple batch records that led up to the perfect one. But you taste test each batch and see, keep records of what worked and what didn't. If you don't keep records of it, you won't be able to do your root cause analysis to figure out why that batch of cookies tasted terrible. Or why that one fell apart was, you know, it tasted good, but it was crumbly and made a mess. Or, um, you know, that one made my pan all stained with marks on it. You want to know why that stuff happens. So you have to keep records of what you did and go back and analyze. And you might only see the trend over time. Like, oh, every time I buy the Aldi's brand, I get a better cookie. Or no, every time I buy the Price Shopper brand, I get a better. You you know what I mean. So. What brand of raw materials, what supplier you use, what line you run the product on has an impact on product. What shift you run product on. Um, it isn't always first shift, that the, the day shift that always makes the best product. Sometimes the best product is on the other shifts and you want to know what they do differently. One of the things I used to love to do, um, I was trained as a, for a while as an in as an industrial engineer, and they, they love doing time studies. So how quickly can you do this? What I would do is I had a line of rotating people, 11 people, and I would time each person on every job, and I'd find out who was the fastest at each job, and it was never the same person. Each person had something they were best at. Sometimes it was two people that were really close, but I would take the people that were best, and I would try to figure out what they did differently than everybody else, and have them train everybody else. Like, how do you do this differently? But I'd find out how they did it first to make sure they weren't taking a shortcut that was unsafe or made a bad product. So that's an important qualifying step. Make sure they're not cutting corners. You know, yeah, I can I can make the batch of cookies faster if I just throw the whole egg in their shell and all. But cracking the egg and doing it carefully and leaving out the shells is preferred by most people. You know, we all need a little calcium in our diet, but probably that's not the way we want people making medical devices and probably not the way we want restaurants making our cookies. So make sure that that faster way is safe. Make sure that faster way makes good product before you go telling everybody to do it the new way. And that's a change to your DMR. That previous slide I had, you have to change this and update it and approve it as the new official way that everybody's supposed to do it because you're not supposed to have people doing it differently in medical devices. This is not cookie making for your for family, and if they don't like it, they can make their own cookies. This is, we're making medical devices to save lives, 
and we want all the people to live. So make sure when you make your cookie batch, you write down how you made it. Try to keep be consistent and use your favorite recipe and follow directions. I never do that, by the way. Um, but, you know, I like to experiment. I like to be on the R&D side. I'm really good at that part. I'm not really good at the production part. I can manage the production part, but I can't do the production part. So this is the difference between these three def definitions. They're all acronyms. DHF, DHF, Design History File. That's this first one. This is the history of the design and all the records that led up to it from the idea all the way to 510K. The second one, the DMR, is how we're going to make it every single week. This is the official process. If we make a change, we have to revalidate it. We may have to do a letter to file. We may have to do a no 510K. But either way, we're going to keep records of that change and validate it. And that's called a DMR. Under the new QMSR, we'll call that a medical device file. And that'll be under 423. And then the last one, the DHR, um, that is the de device history record. That's the batch record, the lot history record, or the serial number record. It tells you how you made that specific device or group of devices all on the same day, same line, same people. And it's really important to know what device you measured it with, what machine you ran it on, what was the oven temperature. That's really important. What were the environmental conditions? Was it hot in the kitchen and that's why everything melted? And it got funny, or was it really cold in the kitchen? Everything just came out perfect this week. That's the difference. So DHR is needed for going back and doing the root cause, that retrospective to figure out why it's different. So that's the end of today's presentation. Um, thank you very much. Um, thank you to Lindsay. Um, Lindsay said hello to. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you very much for sharing those drawings. Fantastic way of taking a, a very complex product, uh, a very complex process and concept in making it much more simple and easier to understand. And that is the essence of what we're known for at Medical Device Academy. It's we try to make these really complex regulations really simple for you. So we took three acronyms that are very commonly confused. We try to make them really simple. And yes, thank you, Lindsay. She said we're welcome. We really appreciate that. That was a great way of doing it. Genius idea to use cookie making as our example to try to illustrate the three points. So I hope next time you make cookies, you're thinking of Lindsay and this presentation. And hopefully the next time you're trying to explain to somebody what a DHR or a DMR or a DHF is or what you're supposed to do under the new regulations in the QMSR, please point them to this video. <laughs> please point them to this video. This will help them and give them a cookie recipe on the, while they're at it. Thank you, everybody. See you next Friday.